Well, everyone, welcome back to another live immigration Q&A this beautiful Wednesday morning. And uh, today is November the 30th. How can it be one day away from December? That is absolutely crazy. I can't believe that. Well, it is what it is and time passes and Oh, you know, the older you get, the faster time passes. <laughs> so it's great to have you guys connecting in. We'll wait a second, a few seconds anyways, for people to connect into the live Q&A. Um, yeah, we've got a lot going on as we are uh, jumping into the lovely month of December. So if you're new, please post in the comment section where you're tuning in from. I see we've got some viewers that are connecting in from Facebook and YouTube, but please I love to see where people are connecting in from. Um, seems like LinkedIn is kind of hurting. Like it's not uh, it's not working as well as it used to. I'm not sure what the issue is. But definitely, uh, please say where you're listening from. Um, it is exciting to see how far this video stretches all around the world. Well, it has been quite a week. I'm plugging away on my economic PR book, which is way more difficult than I anticipated. My co-author, Andrew Carvajal, who is uh, um, who is, uh, based out of uh, Ontario, has been working like a crazy man, and he's got some great chapters out. But uh, I'm plugging away on Express Entry, and it's taking way longer than I thought. So hopefully Eamond Publishers is going to be patient with me <laughs> as I continue to go forward with this. But it is uh, this is one of the highlights of my week, you guys. Um, I have... I've got work scheduled for all day, all the way till 7 p.m. tonight. I've got reviews. I have, uh, I've had consults this morning. I had three this morning. I have another three consults booked uh, tomorrow. And it's for that reason, because I'm so stretched thin, that I brought on really awesome lawyers to join me. And those of you who watch these live streams, you probably think, well, you know, I've got the relationship with Mark. And Mark is the reason that, uh, you know, if I want to hire someone, I'm going to choose to hire him. Well, one of the reasons why I wanted to build my own firm is so that I could build in lawyers that are every bit as intelligent, every bit as good as I am, and then share this wonderful platform and provide you guys with access to just some excellent representation when you're filing your applications. And so as we slide over here to, um, to our, um, our actual website here, and I'll expand this out so everybody can see it, we'll close that off. I created this firm. I could have just kept it myself, right? I could have just decided, you know what? I'm not even going to uh, uh, add anyone else. I'm just going to do it all myself, but I'm, I'm limited. I only have so much time, as you guys can see. And that's why I decided to build a team. And the team is constantly growing and evolving. Yes, I'm here. I'm kind of the face of the operation. But Alicia, based in Calgary, <clears throat> she has been practicing for longer than I have. She's been practicing for two years longer doing immigration law exclusively. And then we have Chanel, who herself, based in Toronto, um, immigrated, came through the process from Australia and <clears throat> has really developed a, a level of expertise in express entry and study permits and spousal sponsorships in the same way. And then lately we brought on Cedric, who has brought in the ability for us to do appeal work and federal court work and all those things that have become a real necessity when it comes to uh, applying for immigration to Canada because sometimes there's just some brutal decisions and immigration in their desire to make things quick often will leave you with a refused application when the decision was wrong. So Cedric handles a lot of that. And Igor is the, he's been with me since the very beginning, the longest, he, awesome. We call him a paralegal because that's his current position, but really Igor does everything for us. And he is just about at the stage where he's going to take his, his, um, law degree and his practice before he came from Ukraine. And he's going to be entered in as a, an articling student and start his practice of law within our firm. So each of these people here on this list that you see is every bit as competent as I am alone to work with you. And in fact, um, we collaborate on virtually everything. So I want to point that out, you guys. So when you're clicking to speak to a lawyer and you go here and you say, okay, here's Alicia, Chanel, Cedric, and myself, and you click on book a 25 minute consult with Mark and you look, oh, Mark doesn't have anything available this week. Uh, and, and then we go to the next, the following week and Mark's not available until Thursday the 8th. Well, understand that there's a reason I'm taking a little bit of time off. Um, 
And actually, I need to adjust that because I'm not available at 7.30. <laughs> because I'm going to be in Nashville with my wife attending a conference. Um, and so you can see the, the reason that I do this, the reason that I brought these other lawyers, and let's just back up here. The reason that I brought these other lawyers on is so that you guys wouldn't have to go somewhere else that you could trust and know that the lawyers that are a part of Holfi Immigration Law, our team, that we are here no matter who you retain to help you and to support you in your journey. And yes, we can provide all of the free advice and direction that's available. You know, we can do these live Q and A's, but it never reaches the stage where, um, you know, where you're going to get the same level of support you can get is when you hire our firm. And so I just wanted to lay that out for everybody and, and let everybody know that uh, that's why we do what we do. All right, let's jump in now. As I was talking about all of that, um, let's jump in and, and give some shout outs to people who are tuning in. If you have not yet connected in, please, please say first time, right? Okay, Mariana, good to see you joining from a rainy window, windy Toronto. Great to have you. Uh, we've got um, Axel, miss you all joining from Paris, France. Wonderful. Thanks for joining in. We've got Gunnar Boy. Hello, past alumnus, right, of the DIY courses. So hope you're doing well, um, doing awesome from Waterloo. Yes, you are. And that's a nice little segue as well into what we have coming down the pipe. So the Canadian Immigration Institute, you can click on the links below. Um, but the Canadian Immigration Institute is where we house the courses. And what do we have coming up? Well, we've got the study permit course. And you have, today is the last day, the very last day to take advantage of this $50 discount, this pre-sale for when we launch the course. The course material are going to be uh, available here in the first week of December. And then the master class is going to be available from December 12th to the 16th where we answer all your questions about studying in Canada. But this course is going to cover a ton of different information for those looking to study. And you can see, you can go to the link and check it all out here. But we've got a bunch of different topics, um, but it's going to be, an, just like the Express Entry course, it's going to be an on-demand course where you can take uh, and watch whatever lessons you want. But in addition, you get access to the master class. We have also have some exciting things happening in the new year where you can actually join uh, membership groups that are ongoing and my master classes are going to be housed in there. So once you take the course and take one master class, you will have the ability to attend all future master classes that you want into the future for a small little nominal fee of like 20 bucks or something a month to stay in the group. So I want to let you know about that. The spells of sponsorship course, we just finished it. Awesome. Such a good course. I, the group, the people that joined that one that finished last week were awesome. You can click here to learn more, but you can get access right now to this course material, the on-demand course material. And finally, Express Entry, which is going on right now. This course uh, we've got today and tomorrow is the last two days for the masterclass. There's still time for you to connect in and join. As you guys all know, it's the step-by-step -step course. And then we also have the LMIA course for high wage positions. So all of this here is available on the Canadian Immigration Institute. And I just love when past alumnus uh, you know, come and join us. So fantastic. Okay, we've got Dennis from Nigeria. Thanks for connecting in. Um, Prithvi is from Hyderabad, India, connecting on YouTube. Thanks for connecting in here. Sanshari up in Calgary. Oh, the home territory. Let's give, uh, let's give him a round of applause. We've got a late applause. There we go. Let's get another round of applause here. There we go. <laughs> Sometimes the audience isn't quite up for uh, jumping on my cues when I tell them to clap. So uh, Jennifer, good to see you watching from Scarborough. Excellent. And um, let's see here. Axel says, I'm glad to announce that I got my passport request last week. Big thanks for all the info. Alicia, Cedric, and you're the best of the best. Can't wait to go fishing some salmon. Yes, indeed. Indeed, Chinook, right? The Chinook salmon. All right. Well, that's fantastic, Axel. We'll give you an applause here. That is, that's amazing. That is so amazing. I don't think I have any big uh, balloons exploding or celebratory overlays right now. I don't think I do as I look through all of my different overlays. Like I do have, um, uh, some of you probably are aware. Let's see. I think I do. Yeah, I do have the minister here. 
He's, he says, congratulations to you, Axel. <laughs> okay, let's see here as we go through. Um, uh, <laughs> Peter says, hey, Mark, are you going to take a Christmas break? Not much, my friend. I really probably am not going to take much of a break. Just next week, uh, my wife and I, I'll be in the office Monday and then Tuesday. We're going to take that time off. I've got a, a, a conference down in Nashville, a small little place called Franklin, south of Nashville that we're going to go to, my wife and I. But for Christmas, we're really going to be around here. And the reality is when other offices close, that's when I do my most work. That's when I do my best work. So yeah, the carts are going to be open. You're going to be able to, to book consults all through Christmas. All right, Axel, yes, and Chanel too, of course. Thanks, Axel, for pointing that out. Okay, Pravneet, Pavneet, good to see you. Um, let's see, who else do we have here? Uh, okay, this person is over on the Express Entry Law private Facebook group. They say, can I purchase your course, which can guide me to apply for obtaining work permits from India? Okay, so I don't have a course on how to apply for work permits. Um, there's courses that are coming, but the reality is work permits are really driven by employers in Canada when you're coming from India. So you really need a job offer and a labor market impact assessment. And if you find an employer who is looking for, um, how do I get an LMIA? <coughs> Excuse me, to have you come <clears throat> and work for them. That's what this course does right here. This, this LMIA course for high wages. So that's an employer directed. It talks about the basics. It talks about recruitment and advertising, preparing and submitting your application and employer compliance obligations. So this one here is directed to employers, but it is available um, for anyone who is, you know, has an employer says, hey, I wanna hire you, but doesn't know how to go about doing it. The LMIA can, uh, can be a, a process to help. Okay, we have uh, Lushi, good to see you, hello. Um, uh, Salim, thanks for connecting in. Good to see you. We've got Jadeep, who's over in India. Hello, Jadeep. Um, thanks, Okarut. Uh, Moses says, hi, thanks for the great job you're doing. Really appreciate that. And Jadeep is over in Surat, Gujarat, India. Welcome. All right. Oh, Gooner Boy, what are you doing here? Okay. So Gooner Boy says, Mark, <clears throat> my postgrad work permit expired June 9th this year. I applied for visitor record June 7th and applied for the post-grad work permit extension in August once it was released. My visitor is approved now. Should I stop working even though I have interim authorization? No, that interim authorization allows you to keep working as long as you have that email that says you're authorized to work, you're authorized to work regardless of that visitor um, that visitor record that was approved. So good, good question, Gunner boy. All right. Um, Let's see here if there are any more shout outs. Looks like we got a bunch of questions. Elsa, good to connect from you. She's from Dubai, but now in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Welcome. <clears throat> Let's see what else we have here. Okay. And uh, Peter says, thanks for the answer, Mark. I hope to be ready. Yes, uh, for you in a month for my PNP application. Great, Peter. I really look forward to working with you and connecting with you. So, uh, yeah. Fingers crossed, we'll get to that right away and uh, get the sooner we can get that application in, the sooner we can get you permanent residence here in Alberta, my friend. All right, okay. Um, okay, so let's go back to the top and we're gonna work through some of these other questions. Um, one of the things that we're waiting on, I think most of you are probably aware by now, is we're waiting to see what's gonna happen with the rounds of invitations. Is the minister gonna continue with is no program specified draws? I think, yes, we know that through the through the end of this year anyways. And then in the spring, he's going to start more targeted information, but more targeted draws. So this, so last week, November the 23rd, there was a draw and it went down to 491. And so I think come next week, next week, I think it's probably going to drop down. We're finally going to break that 490 barrier but we'll see how that plays out. But at this stage, it's still no program specified draws that we are dealing with. Okay, let's uh, see what we've got here. Um, okay, so Hassan says, hello, I wanna take a student visa to take a bachelor's degree. That's great. Hassan says, what is the procedure? Brilliant, thank you for asking. The reality is, has, excuse me, Hassan, all you have to do is go down Click on the link below and you it will take you right here to the study permit course. This is the best place that for you to learn and understand um, how to apply for your study permit. So 
Um, yeah, we're going to talk about everything in that course. Also, like I said, if you have specific questions, um, you know, how do I do something? Do I qualify? Then I always direct, direct people right back to our team here. Chanel really focuses a lot on study permits. Um, so I'd strongly uh, have you consider reaching out to Chanel. Um, I can assist Alicia, uh, Cedric, all of us do that. So it's a, just a matter of you finding the, the next available spot for you. Okay. All right. Next up here. Uh, let's see. Who do we have next? Who's got a question for us? Um, okay. Obina says, Hey Mark, I'm still yet to receive my ITA from last draw scores 502 updates. Knock profile submitted, raised web form, sent emails, no response, please. What do I do? Obina? I don't have an answer for you. I really don't. Um, the, the system, obviously anytime they, they make changes, there are glitches. I don't know what could have been the problem. Immigration, IRCC has been a disaster um, as they've rolled out new changes and the GCMS system itself has been loaded with, with glitches. So the only thing that I can recommend is that you make sure everything is truly updated in your profile. You've got the right, um, the, the knock codes that you've chosen for tier now. The five digit codes are properly set out in your work history. Um, in that section on your, your, uh, in your profile. But yeah, if you did not get an ITA, um, I can't even answer why that's the case. Um, it could be a whole host of things, but make sure your profile is updated because in the next draw, then you'll have a chance to get drawn. So it may just be a two week delay for you, but, <clears throat> but um, that's what I recommend that you do. Now, Obina, if you are not sure what's going on, and you're trying to sort it out, and you want to make sure 100% that your profile is accurate, then by all means, slide over and book a consult with us, okay? So slide over and book a consult with us, and um, all you have to do is click on speak to a lawyer, and uh, each of us, you can check out our bios, you can see what we have going on here. Man, I haven't updated this for a long time. One really cool thing was I went to Claire's home, Claire's home, Alberta, and I think you guys know the RNIP, and if I look up the RNIP communities here, um, let's just see if we can pull them up. I'm not sure if we can find it. Let's see here. Okay, community specific requirements. Oh, I was just there and then it disappeared. Let's see if we can find it. I can, oh, there they are. They're right here. So these participating communities, you can see Claire's Home Alberta is one of the RNIP participating communities. And when we go to their site, I was just there just um, a little over a week, ad, a week ago doing a presentation um, in their facility here. And a lot of these good people uh, were in attendance. But what I talked about was employer compliance and the rights and privileges of um, foreign workers. And sometimes there's abuses that happen. And so I talked about that. I did a presentation on that uh, to the community and uh, to the people that were participating in the programs. And uh, it was awesome. It was so much fun. And that's what I do. Anything that I can do to uh, outreach. But it was the first in-person presentation I did since 2020. So February 2020, I went up to Calgary to present at the, uh, um, at the Canadian Bar Associations to, uh, on marketing to lawyers. So very, very cool. And uh, yeah, so I thought I'd just share that one with you guys. So, all right. So, Bina, that's the case for you. Okay, let's see here what we have next for questions. Um, we'll slide over to our next one as soon as I'm there. We got quite a few in here. Okay. Yosevich says, uh, hi, I'm on a post-grad work permit now. My work permit says I cannot study. However, I work at a college and part of our perks is we get to enroll in programs for free. Does that violate my post-grad work permit? So there are indeed restrictions on, um, what you can study, um, without needing a study permit. But the one of the most important factors, and we'll talk about this in the study permit course, uh, is once you are on, you know, there are certain times when you don't require a study permit to study, but it only triggers, Yosevich, when you are first granted entry to Canada. So on entry, if you come in, you can take any program of study that's less than six months without needing a study permit. But after you've been here and you've extended your status, then there are indeed restrictions on the programs that you can take, especially in person. So what I recommend, Yosevich, that you book a consult. We can talk about exactly what's happening because the last thing in the world you want is to take some classes at the college that would be considered um, violating your post-grad work permit. 
And the best way to do that is to book a consult with literally any of the lawyers can work you through that. And I can show you the law, how it applies. And then we can determine if what you are intending here in terms of these perks is something that would um, run you contrary to the conditions on your work permit. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Lucci says first time. Great. I have a study permit for a two year program. I'm going to give you an applause right here because I do not like anything less than a two year program. Okay. But I decided to just finish the one year where I can get a one year certificate. Can I use it to apply for a one year postgrad? Thank you. Lucy, do not do that. Don't. It is not in your interest in any way, shape or form to only use one year because you're only going to get a one year postgrad work permit and it's not going to be enough. It will, it will seriously jeopardize your ability to continue forward and pursue permanent resident options. There's too much uncertainty out there and a one year postgrad will not be enough. You should not have studied, uh, stopped. Um, don't, don't determine to just finish the one. You go through and finish the two. It's the only advice I'll give you, Lucci. The only one. Okay, let's see who's next here. Um, okay, um, okay. So Moses says I applied for my study permit on July twenty third, but up to uh, up to now I haven't gotten any response from IRCC. What could be the problem? Um, okay, so Mogus uh, Moses from Uganda. You know when we look at the processing times here, the problem that we have with these IRCC processing times, and I'll flip over here my screen. The problem that we have with the processing times, and as we scroll through here, application, temporary. We want a study permit from outside Canada. When you click get processing times, they just have a generic processing time. So 11 weeks is about three months. So if we look, 12 weeks is obviously, and these processing times have been climbing. So if we go back here, when you say you apply July, August, September, October, November, December. So these processing times that are listed right here are average across all over the world. So for your particular country, um, when we're looking at uh, processing times for, um, for Uganda, we know that African countries are notorious for being longer in processing. So it's not surprising that you have not yet received a decision. And um, you know, what could be the problem? It's, I truly believe that it's in the normal course of processing. Okay, we have Janine who's from Cameroon, excellent. We submitted our PR application in September 2022. IRCC sent uh, them a request for additional document. We did send it already. Should I worry? Will my application be rejected? Janine, if they submitted a request for further information, then absolutely you should be concerned. When people have those issues, this is something that I, like when it comes to the work that we do in our firm, if I flip back here, one of the things we spend more time on than virtually anything Legal help is judicial reviews, reconsideration requests, applying for writs of mandamus. These are on the refused and delayed applications, but we also do a ton of work on, reconsider, uh, on, on responding to procedural fairness letters. So this type of a thing, the moment you get them, I would strongly encourage you to reach out to our firm and book a consult to sort it out. Now, in your situation, even though you've responded, I don't know, um, you know how long it took for you to get that ADR and when you responded, but yeah, you need to be very careful. And so we will go through, we will look at your application, we will take a look and see what they're asking for. I put my immigration officer hat on and usually we can determine what the issue really is. And if you did not respond sufficiently, at least in a fulsome way, then we will quickly try to put things together um, to, to bolster or add to what you provided. But they don't just ask for additional documents unless they have concerns. So yes, it's something that I would be concerned about. Okay, King says, hello from Toronto. Uh, yes, it is coming on Christmas. I wonder if I have any Christmas music. I had a bunch of things, but I don't know if I actually have my Christmas still, uh, still hanging around here. Let's see. I do. <laughs> hey, let's play low Christmas music in the background. Actually, I better not. I better stop. <laughs> because then anyone who's watching on Facebook, it blocks it. All right. Let's keep zipping through here to next questions. Um, okay. I got a little sticker on my passport from IRCC for my studies. 
Oh, you got a good little sticker. That is very good. I will give you applause as well. It's a quiet applause. <laughs> All right. Congratulations, King. That's fantastic. Okay, let's see who we have next. Um, Trivet says, our new PR applications for Express Entry Skilled Worker Outland taking six months processing time? No, they're not. They're taking longer. And some may possibly come through quicker, but anytime you want to figure out what the processing times are, you can see here when I slide over, this was last updated today is when they updated the study permits. So this took a bump. If you go back and you look at economic economic immigration here, we choose federal skilled worker, and then we check processing times, you can see. And this was last updated November 30th. Now this is average all over the world, so it depends on where you're at, but yeah, short answer is yes, it is taking longer. Okay, um, all right, Pavneet says, if we get an ITA and submit documents while outside Canada for CEC, how does the process differ for getting PR while being in Canada or outside? Well, inside is always faster. And inside, you can get an e-coper, um, an electronic landing. You don't have to go through any formal process. When you're outside of Canada, you have to submit your passport in once you get your passport a request. And then they will imprint a permanent resident visa as well as um, you know provide or, or send you by mail your COPER, your confirmation of permanent residence for landing. And um, yeah, so obviously settlement funds don't apply for CEC, but it definitely does take longer. Okay, Peter says, thanks for answering, Mark. I hope to be ready for you in a month. You bet. Okay, um, all right. So Jaspreet is in Scarborough, working in the Scarborough Health Network as a CT, uh, okay, CT technologist, and I've studied in Ontario. Should I need an employer form to be filled by them for OINP? or they will help. Okay, so this is this is something that uh, it's really one of these. I'm going to ring the little bell and you really need to book a consult so that we can work through exactly what's required, the program you're going through, all those kinds of things. Okay, let's see what's next. Um, okay, Iman says, hello, I have good points in the SIMP. I have pharmacy degree and I'm working as a pharmacist sales. Can I move to Saskatchewan? <laughs> okay, well, ultimately, the only way you can move to Saskatchewan if you have permanent resident status to be able to do that, or you get a job offer. Um, but as far as good points in SIMP, then it's a matter of waiting and, and seeing if you get your, your nomination. Um, oh, Gunaboy says, thanks, Mark. I also applied for PR recently and Cedric was very helpful. I am so, so happy. Um, let's just see here if we can pull it up. This is something that I, I take great pride in. And so if you go here and you search for, <clears throat> excuse me, you search for our firm, you'll see right here that we have our Google reviews. And the Google reviews, we've got a 4.9, which is awesome. And I always like, this is the one that I care about the most, the lowest. So when I click on here, I see two years ago, this J Deep who, you know, booked a concert with Alicia. We reached out to J Deep to figure out what the issue was. Um, in the end, he never did respond. Um, and then uh, three months ago, we've got this HM who, um, who uh, allegedly left, I guess, here a one star as well, which I've reached out and uh, very little feedback from this person. And then after that, it's all like we've got two four stars, three four stars, four four stars, I guess, four four stars. And then the rest are all um, five stars, which really means a lot. And you can see Odai here, Hamden, Cedric Marin. I was really happy working with you on my case. You're a professional and knowledgeable lawyer. Thank you for your time and efforts. Um, you were so kind and humble. Anyone need his issue to be solved as fast and precise as he wants should contact Cedric immediately. Tejasvit gave me a nice review here. Very, very kind. Alicia's got a nice review just, just recently. But this, you know, for, for how long the firm has been around, which is just really, I'd say a little over two years, I guess we've been around. It really means a lot that we've got already 104 reviews and that we've got a 4.9 star. Now I'll tell you, if you see anyone that has a five-star rating and they have that many reviews, seriously doubt whether or not it's legitimate. Because no matter what you do, you're not always going to make everybody perfectly happy. If someone comes to me and they've got a real tough situation and I say, Mark, I, I say, you know, Rahib, I, I can't help you. Um, you know, because of the decisions that you've made, there's no options available. You're going to have to go home. Well, are they going to give me a five-star review for telling them what they don't want to hear? Well, no, sometimes they don't. Now, ironically, the vast majority of people that I do have those discussions with are very appreciative of the honesty and candor. 
But ultimately, um, yeah, so that means a lot. So thank you, Gunaboy, for, for acknowledging that. That really means a lot. Okay, let's see here. Um, Mariana has got a super chat here. So Mariana says, um, I included a Noxy job and work history in the profile. I didn't know it will prompt an upload of the letter of employment. Mariana, you should take the express entry course. Okay, uploaded a letter of employment after the ITA. Will it be okay to delete it in the work history so it doesn't ask for the letter? Or do I have to upload before submitting the APR? You can totally remove it. But you need to submit a letter of explanation explaining why you removed it. Okay, and you need to confirm that it's because of section 11.2, the completeness kind of check um, when they're assessing eligibility and they're reviewing if you meet the comprehensive ranking system score that you were granted. Obviously, it doesn't impact on either of those, a Noxie job, but you definitely want to provide a letter of explanation. And if you do it correctly, Mariana, absolutely, it has the ability um, to remove that, you know, that section. And yes, you can. Like I said, you can do it. If you do it correctly, it's not going to be a problem. It's not. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, join us. Like jump in right now, Mariana, and join the course. And we can, we can go through and we can sort out all those kinds of things. I have letter of explanation templates that I provide to, um, to students and we use with our clients. One is an employer, like it's an actual, excuse me, letter of uh, explanation for documents. And the other one is a letter of explanation that we use for our information in, for example, our, our, uh, the EAPR information section. So um, yes, so that's what you do, Mariana. And thank you for the super chat there. Okay, we've got someone, hey, How's it going, Facebook user over on the Express Entry Law private Facebook group? Um, okay. Want to know if you or your team is supporting investor visa programs? Nope, I'm not. I don't support um, super visas. It's a, the whole program is a disaster. And just like anything good, like the owner-operator LMIA, there is so much abuse and cheating and scamming. No one who's watching this video, but there are representatives out there that just abuse the program. And that's what's happening with the super visa. So now we've got a program that's delayed. They're backlogged with, you know, with fraud. And now it's just a program that's not moving forward very well. Okay, uh, jet lag. <laughs> awesome. Toya. Hi, Mark. I found an employer and my employer will apply for the PR stream LMIA for me just to support my PR. I'm going to give you an applause. That's fantastic. I'm planning to start working after PR. I'm working for a different company now. Is that okay? Of course. There's no problems with that at all. And if they secured that permanent LMIA, which is option one for um, securing those extra 50 or 200 points under express entry, um, yeah, it doesn't matter. You can work for a different company. The key is that they're offering a job so that after you become a PR, you will have a job for at least a year after you become a permanent resident. And um, that's awesome. And anything that I can do to help uh, uh, Toya, uh, just connect over, book a consult, and we can walk through all of the logistics if the employer needs any assistance. Um, we can help with all that kind of stuff. Okay, Michael says, CRS is 465, completed one year in BC. And my question is, how many years of work experience is required to be eligible for BC PNP? It depends. It depends, okay? Generally speaking, one year of skilled work experience for the vast majority of programs all across the country, not just BC, one year tends to be the standard process. Some are less, like uh, the Alberta uh, Opportunity Stream for postgrad work permit holders is less. You can get by with six months. I think that's six months. I'm pretty sure <laughs> I should know this. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to pull it up here. Uh, eligibility. I'm going to pull up the eligibility and just take a look. So for example, Alberta work experience requirement, if we shift over here, you'll see that um, traditionally, and like many of them, it's a minimum of 12 months. And then if you're a post-grad work permit holder, six months full-time is enough to uh, meet the minimum threshold. But for BC and many provinces, um, it just depends on the program, but generally one year is, is kind of the minimum. Okay, when it comes to eligibility, they factor in a lot of different things with your human capital. And so it's not just um, a simple matter of how many years of work experience am I eligible. One of the things that people need to realize is that it's really competitive in BC. It's really competitive in Ontario. There are limited spots. And when there are limited spots, then they start to look at human capital. Whereas in Alberta, they don't. If you have a, uh, you're working in Alberta and you meet the eligibility, 
They don't rank you against other candidates like they do in other provinces. Okay, Khan, good to see you. Uh, Shoaib is from Pakistan, good to see you. Um, yes, and we covered this one, so no, we don't do. Uh, can you refer somebody? Not really. Um, yeah, when it comes to those types of visas, like there is no investor visa program in Canada, really. Um, like there's entrepreneur programs with some of the PNPs, but our investor program, the pure here, take my money and then I want permanent residence. That was shut down back in, I think it was 2000, uh, when was it? 14, I think. So yes. All right. IELTS required for study visa. Um, language testing absolutely will be required uh, for schools. So take that, keep that uh, in, in consideration. Okay, a lovey-dovey says CRS points went down to 437. Um, okay, I didn't get points for Canadian work experience or foreign work experience after update. Are some tier codes priority that or is an error? No, it's got to be an error. And I recommend, I'm going to ring the bell here, lovey-dovey. I recommend that you book a consult and then through Zoom, we can go in, you can log in and then show me um, what you've got going on in your profile to understand why you're not being eligible. So, um, yeah, so we can definitely take a look at that. I recommend that you book a consult. We can sort it out. Um, I also want to point out for those of you who are new to the YouTube channel, um, if you go here to the YouTube channel, you'll see that we have a join button. And when you click on join, you can get access. It's just a small little fee, like three bucks a month. You can get access to loyalty badges, um, custom emojis, all these member shout outs priority replies to comments, all these kinds of things. So if you want to do that, that is available for you guys too. All right, let's keep zipping through here. And let's see what we have next after we answered Lovey Dovey's question. Uh, let's see, oh, I've gone through quite a few questions today, haven't I? Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's see. Okay, so we'll hit Moses here. He says, I have a diploma in telecommunications engineering from Uganda. What are my chances of getting a job from a Canadian employer? Okay, well, let's, this is what we do. So I do everything I can to try to help. So here's what, one way that you can do to see what the job market is for your position. So if you go to the job bank, the Canadian job bank, and let's see if it opens up. Some days it doesn't. Okay, you can go here to trend analysis. And in here, you can see what the outlooks are. So if you were to go here and choose your, your job, let's just say telecommunications. Let's see what comes up. Okay, um, telecommunications engineer. So I'll pull this one up, 21311. And then we search, you can see, at least it should be relative, updated relatively, like it shouldn't be too old. So this was last updated on November the 6th, okay? Um, this position is, is more rare, it's not super common. But you can go through and you can see all regions across Canada, you know, what the outlook is. So for this position in, and you can see they've got very good now. This has also been updated. They used to have a three-star rating, but now they have a five-star rating, okay, which is a new little advancement that they've created. So you can see it's very good in Newfoundland. So that means that there are, you know, there's several new positions that are being created. Um, if you scroll down to the next um the next location, Nova Scotia. PEI doesn't have enough data, so they there's no uh, no information there. Nova Scotia is pretty good, four out of five. You keep going down here, you can see New Brunswick is really good. Um, if you're looking to travel to Quebec, that's also good. And uh, yeah, it's kind of fun. You, so you can see how the outlook is. Ontario is is good. Let's check out all of them. Manitoba is good. I'm curious to see what my Saskatchewan, there isn't enough real data. Alberta is good. And let's see, what does British Columbia say? BC is moderate. So BC, it looks like there are more telecommunications engineers there. So that's a little tip. And those of you guys out there who are looking, um, that can kind of help you to narrow your, your focus or where opportunities potentially may be. Okay, Ledleb says, do multiple refusals for a study permit in the past have a negative bearing on future visitor tourist visa applications, like a few years ago down the road. Thank you. Yes, they do. They do absolutely have a negative impact. Now, because you had a refusal before, does that mean that an officer can just refuse this application just because you had a previous refusal? No, but it's a factor that they look at. 
Rupinder says, my score is 483. When can I expect an ITA? As in March, I will reduce five points due to age. We don't know. Remember that with Bill, the, the Bill C-19 from the, from the minister, if we, uh, let's see if we can pull this up here. Let's pull it up here. I love to look at the actual legislative provisions here. So I'm going to show you guys this here. So this is Bill C-19. This is an act to implement certain provisions of the budget tabled in Parliament on April 7th, 2022. And this is the kicker here, other measures. So you can see here that the minister's new powers to adjust express entry came from this. You can go to the actual text of the bill right here. So when you click on it, um, it should take us there. It's thinking, thinking. And within this, this is the actual bill that gives the minister his authority to do targeted draws. And it uh, looks like a few people are, are looking at this already. You can see how it worked its way through Parliament um, and the Standing Committee and all those kinds of things. It's taking its sweet time. We'll come back to it. But anyways, um, that's a, a good place uh, you know, uh, to go to see what the minister's powers actually are. But in the new year, like maybe even before March, it's possible that the minister could do a targeted draw. And Rupinder, I don't know specifically what your occupation is. Maybe the minister says everyone that is, well, what do we use? Maybe, maybe, he say, maybe we say, the minister says, anyone that has a, um, a NAW code as a telecommunications engineer, 21311, you know, they will get an extra 50 points towards their ITA. That's entirely possible. And if he does that, then the comprehensive ranking score that you have is really not as important, at least not the everything, the be all and end all. Okay, let's see here what we have next. And we will go here. Okay, um, Olutosin, and just give me one second. I'm gonna flip back here. I'm gonna actually open up the live and pause it. And then I am going to just make one little adjustment. I see we've got a lot of different uh, connections in here. So I'm gonna, and we're gonna connect this and I'm going to go to them. Sometimes we have some interesting things in there um, that pop up on the screen as we're going through and on the spot, I can adjust them. Okay, so Merry Christmas to you, Holotosin. Ah, to you and yours. Okay, current score is 400. Will complete one year Canadian work experience in March. Should I submit my profile now or wait till then? I would wait until then. I would wait until you have the one year. And yes, you can round up, but no, I would wait. Okay, very welcome, Pavneet. My pleasure. Okay, um, okay. Trivid says, thank you, Mark. Some sites are saying that the 27 months refers to COVID pending PR applications and that new PR applications in 2020 are back to six months processing time. There may very well be some countries that are back. And absolutely, the 27 months does refer as well to COVID pending PR. But it's all of them combined. It's, it's all of them. And so lots of people have lots of speculations. And remember, it, can you imagine if you were in IRCC and you decided, oh, those that are pending backlog, we're just going to let them sit forever and ever. And we're only going to do new ones. Do you know how infuriating that is to people? And it's happening. It is. I've got a client who got his, his um, PR express entry from BC approved in like three months, but he was in Canada. So this factors in, if it's federal skilled worker, for instance, those processing times are include outside of Canada, people that are inside Canada. And yes, there's a lot of factors, but they don't distinguish and say, this is just COVID. This is just new. Um, yes, there's a trend and it's faster that with the way they've got things structured. People that are applying sooner that are in Canada that can get landed quicker. Um, people that are in other countries where there isn't massive backlogs because remember the delays also occur with the specific visa offices so with india formulating you know 35 percent or more of the total pr applications through express entry obviously people that are trying to go through and finalize their applications through the visa office and getting their passports all stamped with the permanent resident visa and the copers when they have to go through that process and the you know the 
the visa offices in India have so many applications. Well, it's going to be longer regardless of COVID or otherwise. So we definitely don't want to speculate on these types of things. If the way I tell my clients, look, if you bank on it being, you know, 14 months or 27 months or whatever, and you get a passport request in six months, well, consider that a bonus versus everybody saying, oh, it's coming in six months. And then the moment your application takes seven months, you're wondering what's wrong with me? Well, there's nothing wrong with you. In fact, I had a consult with a client this morning. We had that exact discussion because all the groups are saying, oh, it's faster if you process now than if you're stuck in the pool for a long period of time. And there's absolutely examples of people that have gotten their applications approved, approved quicker. We've got tons of our clients that that's happening to, but I will never ever say everybody's application that submits now is gonna get processed back to six months. It's all business as usual. I'll never ever say that until the processing times that are stated on the government website actually identify that. Um, I'm, I'm not going to over promise and under deliver, which is what the government did for years, right, Trivid? So thank you. Okay, uh, Moses, thank you very much for the insightful answer to my question. You're very welcome. Um, okay, uh, Iman follows up here. I'm asking that I have a pharmacy degree and my NOC is 6221. Am I eligible to apply or my education and profession in the same stream? This, Iman, I recommend that you subscribe to the Express Entry course because when you're applying outside of Canada, your degree doesn't have to match with your work history. So that's not, that's not a requirement. And we're no longer operating with 6221. We're now using tier. So you the uh, so the knock codes are the five digit, not the four digit. But ultimately, when you're applying, what constitutes foreign work experience is if you've performed a substantial number of the main duties um, and all the activities in the lead statement. So that's the factor. And uh, when you're under the Federal Skilled Worker Program, it does not, your education doesn't um, play a role in that assessment except if you're saying you're an astrophysicist and you only have a high school education, well, then maybe they might look at the genuineness of your, whether you actually were qualified to, you know, to work in that capacity, but maybe you can defend it, right? You can explain why. So, okay. Um, Zaire says, working as a food service supervisor in Ontario, and I completed my eight months experience. After completing my experience and getting PR supporting LMIA, my points will be 448. Suggest, please. Well, I don't know really what to suggest. You keep working. You know, once you have your one year, then you're going to get even more points. And um, yeah, so I think you're saying 448 after completing your one year and getting your PR supported LMIA. Well, then, uh, you know, I look here in Ontario. This is one of the challenges of being in Ontario. There are 5,000 other applications. <laughs> My daughter. <laughs> have you guys, I don't know if you can hear that ringing in the background, but have you guys, um, uh, maybe some of you are familiar with, um, with, these, um, with these little games. They're called, uh, what are they called? Game uh, Pigeon or something like that. Uh, game pigeon. Yeah. So my daughter apparently once she's bored at school. So she's sent me, <laughs> we're playing checkers apparently. Anyways, a little side diversion. That's my youngest daughter. Who's in uh, 12th grade here in Lethbridge at high school. My youngest, oh, my baby is just about out of high school. Do you guys see how old I am? I'm an old man. <laughs> All right. So uh, is there another option? Like just Always, when you guys are asking specific questions for yourself, um, it's really one of these and then slide over and book a consult with one of the members of our team, okay? Strongly encourage you guys to do that because the worst thing in the world for me is when people book consults after they've burned up their post-grad, they're running out of options, they have nowhere else to turn. You know, that that proactive retention of, of, of our firm can make all the difference going forward so that you don't get yourself down a path where you're using up your time and then you don't have options. Okay. Okay, Janine says, hello, the requirements for additional documents was to send the original TEF copy signed, which we did already, should I worry? I just can only tell you to book a consult, Janine. Why are they requesting something that they didn't require in the beginning? Is there fraud? Maybe there's a history of fraud within the place where you specifically obtained your, your language test. That's entirely possible. We're seeing it a lot. And I also want to um, 
let you know about a collaboration. Uh, I'm trying to remember when it will happen. Uh, let's just see here. Um, okay, let's just see here. Cell pip. Okay, so this is one thing I want to share with you guys. So for the cell pip here, the test for immigration, this test uh, the, the, with Paragon, we're actually going to be doing a joint webinar with CellPip. Um, and lots of you have used uh, the, um, the IELTS for your testing, but I didn't realize how many different locations uh, CellPip is now offering testing. And so you can see now, um, like a lot of the different systems, but CellPip itself, um, you know, the, 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 the different locations that you can get are, are very, very broad now. There's a number of different countries. I don't know if it has it right here where you can get it, but uh, I won't go through that. But I'm going to be doing a webinar, um, a, a sponsored webinar with CellPip. So uh, I'll be sharing more information with all of you guys about that shortly. Okay, so yeah, Janine, I recommend you book a consult. Okay, uh, let's see what's next here. Casey? Good to have you connecting in over there on the Canadian Immigration Institute Facebook page. Um, okay, Ella says, can we insert our current job details under personal history and not under work history if we're not claiming points for it? Yeah, I do it all the time. And yeah, any job that isn't getting me points um, or eligibility for express entry, um, I only put it in the personal history and I provide a letter of explanation explaining why. Okay, Jatin, good to see you. Okay, we got about five minutes left before we wrap up today. Okay, uh, Panashi says, Mark, do you think studying French will help get ITA after Bill C-19? Please don't say I don't know. Of course it's going to help. It will always help. And the reason it will help is because the minister is committed to expanding Francophone immigration. If you guys are wondering what the world looks like, where things are going, um, you will probably recall, let's go back here. I'm going to go back to my main page here. Okay. Um, and on our main page, let's see if I can find this. Oh, now I can't, now I can't get to it. Let's see, where is my video? Okay, I'm just going to slide over here and just show you guys. So this right here, my top six takeaways from the minister's report this video right here, as I pause it here, this video right here, I go into detail explaining what I believe the minister is really planning to do with his new, with this report that he launched. And um, obviously it got a little bit of traction, but in here, and it's not long, it's about 13 minutes, I strongly encourage you to slide over and watch it. Um, which one is it? It's this one right here uh, that is the top six reasons. Oh, did I jump past it? And I got so many things. This one right here, tier to PR, top six. There's a reason it's got, you know, 40, well, pretty much 45,000 views. It's because I took the report and I looked past what the minister was, was saying outwardly. People said, oh, it's just fluff. And I broke down areas of, of direction where people need to be focused. And Francophone um, language abilities are always going to be there, are always going to give points because it's a critical component when people are taking the French language ability that they have and they go to live outside of the province of Quebec. It's a priority. So I'm not going to say I don't know. So I do know it is helpful. It will always be helpful. Okay, let's keep zipping through here. Um, uh, Toya, you're very, very welcome. Um, okay, uh, Sanchari says, Mark, what are the prerequisites to apply for visas under the global skills strategy? Well, Understand the global skill strategy is really employer based. All of these are. It's a, a way for um, people to come through and get work permits in an expedited, faster process. Um, and uh, and and so it's it's just to help companies get their workers faster. And when you go here, I'll just pull it up right here. This is the global skill strategy. So it's really employer driven. And um, it's for employers who want to attract top talent for their companies and they want a fast and predictable process to do it. So simply put, that is, um, yeah, that's it. And Igor once again has reminded me, you guys, uh, to let people know that for the study permit course, this special offer that we have of $50 off, this is the last day to take advantage of it. So make sure that you click on here and enroll now. And when you enroll now, you have the ability right here 
to get that $50 off, but after today, it will disappear, okay? So this is the pre-sale. And then the first week, within the first week or so of, of December, we're gonna be launching the materials in preparation for the actual live um, masterclass that will happen uh, the 12th to the, is it the 15th? I'm just, let me just backtrack here and I'll make sure I've got the right date. Yeah, the 12th to the 16th, okay? So that's the Monday through the Thursday. Okay. All right. Thank you, Igor, for reminding me. Okay. <laughs> Trivid, you're very welcome. And thanks, Simon. I appreciate it. Good questions that you guys ask result in a good, good episode. All right. So I'm going to wrap it up here. I almost went through everybody's questions. Um, uh, let's just touch on Jennifer. Reached 1560 for CC. However, not all weeks. I worked 30 hours. Can I count the hours I worked less than 30? Reason is I, my son got sick. Um, you need to meet the, the, you need to hit the level that they're asking for. So if you didn't work it, then you're not going to get credit. Now, ultimately, there are things that you can do with your employer. Um, like I continue to work to make sure that I accumulate the full amounts. But Jennifer, I recommend that you click on the link, book a consult, and we can chat about that further. Um, uh, uh, Saha says, how long does it take on average to get an answer after re uh, responding to procedural uh, fairness letter? <laughs> yeah, no, like... There is no average. It depends on it depends on the officer. Um, Andrea says, "Hey, Mark, can I have a express entry profile while having an Atlantic immigration application at the same time?" Yes, you can. Um, Nisha says, "What level of French does one need to get points?" Well, you can see when it comes to language assessments here. Um, okay, when it comes to language equivalency, we'll pull up the chart here. Okay, so here's the here's the equivalency chart, right? So you can see for under the cell pip, and then we've got IELTS, and then we have the TEF, okay? So French language. I'll be honest, you guys, this level right here, CLB9, is the one where you're actually going to get the vast number of points, okay? That's really where it comes. Anything that's a CLB9 level right here is what drives the ship. If we go over here to the CRS criteria, and we open this up, and then we scroll down to the bottom, we'll close this, Yes, for language points, you can see if you go through and we'll just jump down here to the breakdowns and we'll go to the language assessments right here, official language, second official language. <clears throat> so you can see here, a CLB4 less is nothing. So once you hit CLB5 or 6, and if we go back here to the language, that's this level here, 5 or 6, then if once you hit these levels here on the French test, TCF and 5 and 6, then you start to get points here. For French. If you go here, you can see seven or eight. Nine or more is where you're capping out, where you're maximizing for the second language, official language. But when you go down here to the very bottom, you'll see that for those bonus points, the big 25 and 50 points, as long as you have at least <clears throat> a CLB4 in English, which most people do, then it's the NCLC7 or higher. NCLC7 or higher. And if we jump back here, it's this level here. So that or higher is where you're really getting the bonus points. So seven or higher. Okay. <clears throat> Scratchy throat here. All right. Let's wrap this up quick. I think we've got to everybody pretty much. Um, uh, what is the best IELTS score for an international student studying biotechnology in Ontario? Well, best score, you want to have at least a CLB9, which is eight in listening and a seven or higher in other abilities. But yeah, like the scores can go up to 10. Um, if you're looking at IELTS, as we look at the scores, you know, what, what's the highest? Well, it just, it just depends. Um, flip this over here. Technically, you could get a, you know, CLB 10 is an eight in reading, a seven and a half, uh, writing eight and a half, listening, seven and a half speaking. Okay. And uh, let's see here. We've got Dexter. He says, watch your videos a lot when I was filling my application. It took 23 months, but I finally got my PR three months ago. So just saying thank you, Mark. I will give you one of these cheers. And Sanchari, you're very welcome. And Devin, I think we got to every last person on here. Post ITA spouse has two columns. One is for education and second is specifically for transcripts. Usually everyone has just education column. Yes, if you're claiming Canadian education points for Canadian school, transcripts, that's what's triggered. That's why you have that. And um, Kiri says, if you don't have a permanent residential address to receive PR card in Canada, what can you do? Well, you need to get one. Simple as that. And, uh, and uh, um, Chanel, on our firm website, if you go back to our firm website, and I will officially wrap it up with this, you go to blogs, okay, 
Let's see if we can find PR card. Let's see if it works. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't when I'm searching. So let's see what comes up. We'll keep our fingers crossed. <clears throat> oh, you goofy thing. I'm going to refresh this. <clears throat> okay, I don't know why it doesn't work. How to get your PR card after landing. I highly recommend you go here, look up this one on the website, and Chanel talks about things, including online address notification tool, which is this one here. Once you do get an address, you can then notify them using this tool, but you need to do it within 180 days of uh, getting your PR, okay? There we go, guys. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much for tuning in. We had another great express entry and really Canada live Q&A. So thanks for everybody that has contributed. Um, this is what makes this so much fun. Last shout out once again, if you click on the links below, you'll get access to this one in particular, the study permit course, which is which is uh, the $50 off um, sale that we have will be uh, coming to end. So you have to do it. Today's the last day before December the 1st. And then if we jump back here, you can subscribe right now to the other courses, the spousal sponsorship and the express entry and start working through those videos right now <clears throat> as you prepare for when we do our next master class. All right. Okay, there we go, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Another great live q and I'm Canadian immigration lawyer, Mark Holthy, wishing you guys all the best as you navigate this crazy world that we call Canadian immigration. Take care.